Gender and ideology fall hand in hand and they are inextricably and pervasively linked. What this means is that your gender comes with a set of ideological strings attached and society is the puppeteer pulling and tugging at these strings that are supposed to hold you upright. Whilst both men and women are faced with societal expectations, I want to focus more closely on the ideology that besets the latter gender. We as females are relentlessly prescribed amplified doses of garments and glosses and the correct ways to act and the right things to say if we hope to succeed in the pursuit of finding Mr. Right. We should preen and condition ourselves in everything from appearance to the way that we communicate via text until the comforting shrill of wedding bells sound and the game has been won. McRobbie argues that despite the idealistic oxymoron of natural beauty, girls are told to go along with what men presumably want if they hope to win their affection. The processes of production, presentation and consumption of gender in pop culture and how these processes interact are what facilitate these unrealistic expectations that we recognise as gender identities. Diane Negra analysed the ways in which popular cultural representations of women strongly revolve around time. These are normative milestones that women should adhere to if they want to feel validated in the eyes of society. These include finding a man, getting married and having children. A three-step remedy that will ensure fulfilment, or so we're told. But when does society celebrate being single? Not just for a month or so until your Tinder profile matches with the next person and you're flung back into the dating arena. When does society actually celebrate being single without the looming tick of time and infertility? Milestone suggests that popular culture presents women as the emotional rather than cognitive sex and therefore we are intellectually limited in comparison to men. This gender ideology constructs femininity as inferior to masculinity, which always inhabits the opposite domain. Women look good, but men have careers. Women are in tune with their emotions, but men have the brains. A quote from the Sex and the City series has always stayed imprinted on my mind, and it's when Carrie furiously admits, I have spent money on wedding presents and on other people's children, but no one has ever celebrated the fact that I am single. I think it's one of the most hushed indictments on society to lord women who settle down and find a soulmate and somehow denigrate women who we contemptuously coin to be married to their careers because that's not what they're supposed to do as told by society. Maya highlights that mainstream cinema has produced a plethora of romantic comedies that revolve around single women desperate to find a man. This portrayal of gender and ideology in popular culture has indisputably brainwashed our society. Through the consumption of these depictions, we come to believe that a completely single woman nearing her 40s is on board a one-way flight to eternal loneliness and misery. My example for this is one of the most penultimate cheap flicks to have been revisited, rewatched, and revived by society long after its 2001 movie release, Bridget Jones's Diary. I admit to having absolutely loved this movie before taking a moment to just reflect on the message that it's really communicating. Bridget stands as the antithesis to all that modern feminists are kind of fighting for. She constantly whines about how fat she is, how perpetually alone she is, Celine Dion's All By Myself becomes her veritable anthem and she is so so adamant that she will never find a man and is so stuck in this rut and caught up with this idea because she thinks that her time's running out and that's what she has to do. Yet the audience falls in love with Bridget for all the things that she overlooks and all the things that kind of we tend to overlook when we look at, you know, a single woman of her age. Yet she is so stuck on this idea that she fantasizes tradition, she envisages herself in a wedding gown with bridesmaids all in white, and so the character of Bridget begins to really succumb to the gender ideologies that associate happiness with finding someone to marry and have kids with, and that ties back to the whole concept of the normative milestones. Whilst all of these stereotypes and expectations are rife within our society, the distinction between man and woman is beginning to blur, and with that comes a gradual erosion of the ideology surrounding each gender. 
This is a huge facet of our culture right now and one that I hope will continue to break down the normative milestones that have been prescribed to women and girls for centuries.